troubleshooting client performance at scale. Uh, it actually says troubleshooting on the, the list, so I kind of retrofitted that into the, uh, the title. But uh, my name is Donal. Um, I'm going to talk to you. Uh, I'm going to have seven slides. I'm going to tell you a brief story. I'm going to show you a little bit of code. And I'm going to show you a proof of concept that I'm working on. So I'm going to do a demo. Uh, and I hope the demo gods, I didn't sacrifice anything to them. But uh, I'm, I'm on my personal hotspot here uh, as opposed to the main Wi-Fi. So uh, let's hope and pray. Um, the story starts in Melbourne, it goes to Berlin, it goes to Sydney, it actually goes to Maastricht last year to the WLPC uh, conference, where I actually got help from people in this room. So I can't emphasize how much it's really good to have a uh, community, because I'm a bit of a Wi-Fi noob, so I'm kind of like entry level, starting to hopefully get a little bit towards intermediate. Why am I telling you this story? Um, basically to facilitate decision making. Uh, I've had a lot of troubleshooting woes with different level of vendor kit. Um, there hasn't been a lot of money for some of the clients, nor did I have all the tools. Um, so I needed to basically build something myself and learn a little bit about Wi-Fi along the way. So where does the story start? Um, basically, it starts in three co-working spaces, a franchise uh, in Australia where I used to live. Uh, we had a problem in Sydney on the second floor where we were just having like major dropouts in a specific area and we couldn't work out what the hell was going on. Um, if you notice the image here, anyone recognize this as Meraki? Anyone, uh, well, I was gonna say strengths and weaknesses of Meraki, we don't have that much time. But um, let's just say Meraki obfuscate and don't give you access to their low level logs. It's very hard to actually dig in and get some really, really good low level information. But as you can see, there's a lot of churn in these co-working spaces. So there's a, there's a lot of data being used in terms of SaaS or cloud-based apps. Um, there's a lot of people coming through the space versus the, the number of APs that were there. Um, and we didn't know what the hell was going on. To make matters worse, uh, I was doing ops for this space from Berlin. So I didn't actually have, I, was, I didn't have people on the ground or engineers that I could uh, send in. And I got to give a shout out to, where's Scott? who helped out, so Scott who went on site and actually figured out what the hell was going on for us, so, so major props. I actually met Scott at this uh, conference last year. But what I did though in the interim was, um, we didn't have seven signal, didn't have um, extra APs to put in monitor mode. It was really hard for me to get packet captures. Uh, so basically just went with what we, what we had, which was uh, some bash scripts on like uh, a laptop, a Mac OS X laptop in a corner that was actually writing metrics to Dropbox and I was slurping up the metrics in Berlin and then had a lot of fun with GNU plot to try and figure out what the hell was going on. So uh, I actually got quite good with GNU plot, but what we were looking for was the red are like hits to SNR where the SNR dropped below 20. Um, and we were trying to figure out, is it because the noise floor is coming up? Is it interference? Um, is, it, you know, is it some specific client? Uh, we also had a problem in the building, which was an over-voltage issue. So this was one of these like converted warehouse kind of open plan spaces uh, with a lot of open ducting uh, and you know, compressor motors for uh, aircon. And the UPS there was actually going into bypass mode, um, so we got the traps uh, every time that happened and plotted those as well to try and figure out, like, was there some sort of arcing on the motor, or was there interference? But basically, what it highlighted to me was there was no quick and dirty way to get really good visibility. Meraki has some tools, we didn't have expensive kit, uh, but we really needed to see what the clients were seeing. The other problem in a co-working space is that it's not one organization. You don't have managed laptops. So you have lots of different businesses or, or you know, freelancers and independents um, with, with different machines, and, and they just want it to work, right? They're not gonna go and upgrade and, and do troubleshooting. Uh, so over time, uh, we saw a pattern, but the pattern didn't really help very much. Um, so we, I built something that actually got us a little bit closer to this, so this kind of loops back onto Carol's previous talk about uh, instrumenting the clients um, and also data visualization and trying to get a, a handle on what's going on. So I didn't know if this was, uh, it was a primarily Mac environment. 
I didn't know, it's very hard to see, but I'm, I'm gonna pull up a bigger version. I didn't know if it was certain uh, versions of the operating system, I didn't know if it was certain APs, uh, I didn't know if it was in relation to the noise floor, was it, uh, was it the DNS in the, in the environment, uh, was it the default gateway, or was it the network? Uh, okay, so the first thing to show you, let's see if I can make this bigger and more visible. Can we see that? All right, cool. Um, so I don't know, has anyone heard of ELK, the ELK stack? So yeah, E for Elasticsearch, L for Logstash, and K for Kibana. Um, it's basically a NoSQL no uh, database. It's a key value store. Um, and it's a nice database in the sense that there's no schema. You can just basically modify the schema on the fly and you can do the equivalent of what they call migrations. Um, I decided to use Elasticsearch to just pump as many values I could in from client machines, starting with my own uh, machine, just to get some data, to get some reference points over time. The nice thing about uh, Elasticsearch, which I'm going to show you in a second, is it's got really good text search. It's got a, a Lucene uh, search engine at the back of it. But to begin with, um, I essentially just wrote some bash, right? What, old school network guy. I could have done it in Perl. Perl's not cool anymore. It's, you know, it's a bit slow. Um, I knew bash would work on lots of different uh, Mac machines, and I didn't want to have to install anything. So I started pulling data. Uh, with the intent of grabbing some very basic information, such as the RSSI, the noise floor, the transmission rates, you know, MCS index. I wanted to look at the BSID, as in what AP we were talking to. I wanted to look at the SSID uh, and what channels we were on. But I wanted to start tying it to information like, okay, what's the default gateway? What's the average latency to the default gateway? You know, what's the DNS? What's the actual DNS latency? Because this all affects the application performance and the perceived user experience. And I haven't really seen that kind of come together uh, in many places as yet. Also using like, uh, like a Lighthouse IP or a Lighthouse um, web page. So getting, you know, testing to Google and just seeing what the speeds are. And then essentially pumping this up um, into a database. So I'm gonna let this run in the background. Um, and I'm going to show you uh, basically what uh, Elasticsearch kind of looks like. Um, you can set up a lot of mappings and you can pump data very, very quickly into it. So we've got things like primary, secondary channel, average latency, interface, you know, host name, uh, some HTTP uh, information, some unique IDs. But I mean, this, that doesn't look pretty. Um, what's a lot more interesting is the ability uh, to start drilling into uh, multiple user machines um, and start drilling down in real time, looking at the latency at specific times of the day, and not just that, but then being able to correlate that with uh, specific access points. So what we've got here is like a list of uh, the worst performing APs. I'm sorry the colors don't look very good on this screen, but what it allows us to do uh, is very quickly get an appreciation for which APs uh, are consistently have clients that have very low SNR against them. Um, it also allows you to drill into uh, you know, DNS latency within a specific time frame and see what clients were connected to what APs. The other thing that Carol mentioned, which is uh, kind of interesting, was that we were able to break down very quickly, uh, well, this is just OS 10 environment, but which OS X um, operating system versions and or patch versions were resulting in low SNR. So we were trying to basically delve into, you know, like the Yosemite uh, upgrades recently, there was a lot of Wi-Fi issues. I wanted to see if it was like these APs over in this area with, you know, you know 10.4 is the problem as opposed to 10.5 or what, uh, what version of operating system. So one of the things I should explain, Kibana is part of that ELK stack and it allows you to basically generate visualizations uh, very, very quickly in terms of data, and it's very easy to pump data into and then essentially start asking it questions. Um, so you can do uh, text-based queries and you can separate out specific hosts. Um, it allows you to jump through time series in terms of uh, relative values or you know, for the last 
12 hours and so, uh, and so on and so forth. So what I was trying to do was trying to get that correlation between you know, the application performance and the user experience, elements of the RF and elements of the network and try and uh, tie that together. Uh, okay, so I'm pretty much over already. Um, I'm gonna do one more slide. So can I just get a hands up? Who actually uses a Mac? Who runs OS X? All right. So who used to code in Perl or Bash or can do a little bit of basic programming? Yeah? All right, so I'm gonna put this up as a challenge to you. Um, basically, we've posted all this uh, example code on Git, uh, on GitHub, uh, specifically as gists. Um, and you can take a look at the uh, a client which pumps data into uh, an Elasticsearch database. You can have a look at the mappings uh, and you can basically come up with your own uh, versions of what information that you want to pump in there. Uh, again, stuff like noise floor, system software, um, different channels, uh, latency, and so on and so forth. Um, and not to put anyone off in terms of command line, uh, albeit uh, a sort of a, essentially you know, a couple of hundred lines of bash. Uh, it's nothing too complicated. And we thought, we can't just run this on people's machines. So we found something very nice and very cool called Platypus. So check out Platypus, which allows you to take any tickled Perl script, bash script, and wrap it into an application bundle, and then basically just run it on your Mac, install it on your Mac, download it, and run it. So we started playing around. Uh, it creates a .app bundle. You'd probably need to have like a, a full installer to, oh, excuse me, you can, you can wrap the .app into a DMG, easy peasy. Just create an image file, drop the app in, and then give it to someone. Um, but if you wanted to create an installer that it would go through all the different steps to actually install and demonize it, you'd probably use uh, a different installer. Um, the only thing is when I went around to people and said, uh, can you install this trilobite app? I guess I didn't pick the best icon. But uh, <laughs> they're like, I'm not putting that in my machine. Um, so that's pretty much it. I just urge people to go out. It was actually, I was motivated from the talks here uh, at the last WLPC. I forget Buddy's name. He's now moved to the UK. He was doing some coding low level, like um, he wasn't using T Shark, but he was doing like raw packet access on the Mac. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to pop his name. But uh, yeah, so I wanted to give a shout out to him. I was going to say posthumously, but I can't remember. No, he's not dead. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to give a shout out to Scott. And uh, just, just, just say, like, yeah, get stuck in. Hey, have a poke around. And I learned an absolute ton. And uh, yeah, thanks, Keith. Great.